The spirit of Manifest Destiny was renewed after the victory of the Mexican War and the discovery of Golden California. With the sudden rush westward, the future of Central America was an immediate concern for the U.S. government. The British seizure of the port of San Juan del Norte led the United States and New Granada to sign a treaty in 1848 to guarantee the Americans' right of transit across the isthmus in exchange for the promise of maintaining the so-called perfect neutrality. Two years later, in 1850, a large confrontation with Britain was avoided by the clayton bowler Treaty, which stated neither America nor Britain would attempt exclusive control over any future isthmus waterway. In Nicaragua, William Walker gained control and immediately legalized slavery. Soon after, the coalition of Central American nations formed an alliance to overthrow him, and President Polk withdrew his diplomatic recognition. After the, both of these, Walker's power was diminished. Southerners attempted twice to take over Cuba in 1850 and 1851, but both ended in failure, the second of which ended tragically with the shooting of their leader and 50 of his followers. At this time, President Polk could have started a war with Spain to seize Cuba, since all of the major European powers were unable to help Spain because of their entrenchment in the Crimean War. Determined to control Cuba, the Secretary of State contacted the American ministers of Spain, England, and France, and told them pre to prepare confidential recommendations for the acquisition of Cuba. Together, the three countries created a top-secret dispatch known as the Austin Manifesto. They offered $120 million for Cuba and stated that if Spain refused, America would be justified in forcibly taking Spain from them. But the top-secret document was leaked and word spread quickly. This extremely angered the already agitated northern free soilers and the Pearson administration dropped all schemes of acquiring Cuba.